It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about the Crowbot Bolt. This was sent to me by Elecro to test out and I'm really excited to show it to you guys. Elecro reached out and asked me to talk about this little robot and they call this the Crowbot. Um, it looks like a little cat if you look at the front of it there and then these are LED lights that can turn on and off. Um, it's got little wheels and it's got a little back wheel and basically it's got code instructions that let you set it up to run as a little robot. Now it comes basically pre-coded, but it's not put together. So I got my girls that are 12 and 11 to sit down and try to put it together and trying to get them to understand they need to read the instructions, don't just try to figure it out was, was part of it. Um, the little plexiglass uh, pre-cut pieces are really nice, but they do come covered with a piece of paper on each side that's adhesive, so they need to peel that off. And they didn't realize that and they got it put together and then realized, oh wait, the paper comes off. So yeah, you know, little things that you just don't pay attention to can matter. But um, once they did it, they, they probably reassembled it twice, just trying to get everything the right way. But uh, really the, the little pictures that they had on the instructions showed them exactly how things should fit together. They were able to look at it and figure it out. And it was really uh, pretty easy. It maybe took them 20 minutes to get it all the way together. And once they do, then it's got this little remote and uh, you do need to put a battery in it. It does not come with a battery in the remote and it's like a little uh, CR, some size remote, I, uh, some size battery. I had one that's a little thin. It's probably a little bit thicker battery than I've got, but it works. Um, but yeah, once, once you've got the battery in there, you also need batteries for this. It does not come with batteries. Uh, I think these are AAA batteries on the actual Crowbot itself. So rechargeables are always a good idea when it's a kid's toy, especially, but this thing's pretty cool. Um, I've got some video of it rolling around and it's, it comes with a little piece of paper on the back of the instructions. It's got a little track, so it'll follow the track. And then it has sensors, so you can actually get it to follow a light and things like that. Um, it, it has object detection, so it can actually stop and not hit an object. But now it comes with a lot of pre-programmed -pro, pre things uh, ready out of, the, out of the gate with this little remote. But the cool thing about this is that it's programmable. And the idea is that you get your kids into programming by using something like this, where they can try to make this do more. Um, that was the reason I was really interested in it when they sent me the offer in the first place. I'm getting nothing from Elecro for doing this little review and telling you guys about it, other than they sent me the robot to, to test out. Um, I have asked them for a discount code for all of you guys, so if you're interested in getting this and letting your kids kind of get started on it, if you think your kids would be interested in it, I'm always looking for things to get my, my kids interested in something besides just sitting and staring at their devices all day. And this really kind of gave me that mix of, okay, they get to, they get to kind of be around something electronic, but they get to do something creative too. So, so yeah, the programming part of it and the open source part of it really got my attention and I was super excited for them to kind of say, hey, we've, we've got this really cool toy and we want you to check it out. Uh, we'd love for you to give us a review of it. So that's what I'm doing. And we're going to go through that here in just a minute. Again, I've got some imagery of the robot going around and doing a few different things. Um, I've got some, some images of kind of the kit as it comes. And then we'll look at the programming environment as well now. One of the things that I like, they have a graphical programming environment, which is really good for littler kids and, and even my girls who have programmed a lot before. Um, so it's kind of a drag and drop thing where you put pieces together. Um, pretty nice looking, but it's only for Windows, Mac, and Raspberry Pi. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, that's awesome. You could probably use it. I have one. I just haven't taken the time to put that on it yet and get it set up. It's, it's been set up for some other stuff for a while. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to do that and check it out. But they also have Python. So you have an option to use Python if you'd like to do that. Maybe your kids are kind of getting beyond the graphical, you know, drag and drop stuff and they want to do a little more. So they've got a really cool Python editor, um, some cool stuff you can do to connect right to this thing and really start making it do some stuff. So we'll kind of go through those things and what it takes to get that set up as well. But yeah, really cool. I like this little thing. It's called the Crowbot. It's very, very cool. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty nifty. And it's, a, I think it's about $40 US to get the kit. So it's this whole thing. Um, all the parts you need for it, plus the remote. And then they have a different kind of remote you can get and set up that also runs on an ESP32, but I think it's extra. I wanna say it adds another $20 to the kit. So it's kind of up to you whether you do that. But I'll have links in the show notes in the description. Again, I don't get anything, no affiliate money, nothing like that. I'm looking for a discount code from them for you guys so that you can maybe get a discount on it as well. But I think it's really awesome. And getting kids into programming, getting kids into open source is just one of the greatest things I can think of. And this is a really great way to do it because not only do they get to see what open source is, but they really get something out of it that they can enjoy and play with and kind of have as their own. So we're going to get into the rest of the video right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. 
If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So when you first come to their site, you can just click on this right here. I'll have links in the show notes in the description as well to try to give you a direct link. But it's going to load up, and you can see here kind of what the cost is. Now, it'll, it'll adjust based on where you live, I'm sure. You can kind of check out the different packages that they have, stuff like that. But as you scroll down, you'll see videos that they have, some different things that you can see. This is that graphical programming language I was talking about, which looks real, like a really great way to kind of get kids interested and started on programming. And then you can always move into more of the text-based programming later. Um, as you scroll down, there's it's way down here at the bottom. So if you're looking for it, it, it was hard for me to find. I actually had to email them to ask where this stuff was at. But they do have some links once you get way down here. So it's got all of the different tutorials and lessons and things like that you can get. You can get the code that actually just comes on it by default, so you can put that back on there when you're when you're done playing with it and things. So you've got the factory source code, you've got the 3D model, you've got the lesson code, and then you've got some different design things here. So a lot of really cool stuff down here at the bottom. So there's these links here at the bottom of the page. So just make sure to scroll way down if you want to see that. Uh, one of the things you can jump to is their wiki. And really, when you look at the wiki, it's got a lot of the same information, but it's just laid out a little bit different. And you can kind of jump through it over here on the left side. So it might be an easier way for you to go through the information that they've got. What I did, since I don't have a Windows PC or a Mac or anything to connect to this thing, I've got a Linux machine. That's just what I use. For now, I've just gone ahead and gotten the Python uh, programming stuff and pulled it down. They've got a really good tutorial that shows you exactly how to pull the stuff down and get it running. So I'm just going to... Pull this to the background and I'm going to open up the other package here. So as you can see, I've already loaded this up, but it's really, really straightforward. You install this package called Thonny. Uh, as far as I can tell, that's how you say it. And you plug this uh, little robot. So I'm going to plug it into the USB-C port right on the back. So it looks like my cat has a long tail that is going uh, up to my machine. And then I'm going to turn on the power. And when I do that, um, depending on how you have this set up, you may see it pop up over here on the left, but if not, you go up here to Tools, Options, and you're going to go here to the Interface tab. When you get to the Interface tab, you want to make sure that it's got ESP32 selected here with MicroPython. So you just go down in the list, find ESP32. And then down here, you should, if you've connected it and turned it on, you should have an option for the USB sitting right here. Some port that you've connected with should be sitting here besides these other two options. When you pick that port, the first thing you want to do is say, is click on this install. Again, you're going to pick on the port, and then you're going to browse to the folder where you unzipped the Elecro code. So here I'm going to go to Crobot Elecro. I'm just going to double click. I'm going to go into the lessons, and then I'm going to go into Python. And then right here is this firmware folder. So I'm going to double click on firmware and I'm going to select this firmware. I'm just going to hit open. And then I'm going to get it, go ahead and hit install. And what that does is it pushes the firmware across the USB to the device. It takes just a couple of minutes, so be patient. Um, they tell you this might take a minute. It's, it's going to flash your device. Now, when you get the Elecro robot, it's already pre-programmed. It does a whole bunch of stuff. So I suggest kind of read the manual, play with the button, see what it does, see what you can make it do. Kind of enjoy that first. Let the kids play with it after they put it together. That just gives them incentive to say, wow, this is kind of fun. I like this. I like this project. Um, that's just my suggestion. You know your kids. Do what, do what you think is best. But know that when you run this, what I'm doing right now, it's going to flash the chip on the robot, and you're going to be basically back to no activity. It's not going to do anything. All right, it's finished up. I'm just going to click on close, and we're just going to click on OK here. And if everything went well, you should see something kind of like this uh, on your screen. But this is kind of your programming interface. Now, if you've never done any Python, you definitely want to kind of check out the things that they've got. But here in this top window is all of my lesson code. And here in the bottom window is the interface to my Crobot. So if I just cl double click on this, you'll see it goes out and retrieves that information. So this is just the bootloader. Now, one of the things they say in their documentation is you need to create a file called main.py. So I'm going to just right click here in this empty space down here. I'm going to choose new file. And then I'm going to title this main.py, which is .py is just the, the extension for Python. 
and it creates this tab. I haven't saved it yet. It just creates a tab for me. So you can see these tabs that I'm getting opened up up here, okay? Um, I'm just going to close this empty one just to make some space. There we go. We can even close the boot one so we don't accidentally do it. Now, be very careful because the first time I did this, I messed up a bunch of these things. You can always just unzip the package again if you mess stuff up, but I did mess things up uh, initially because I was accidentally pasting into the wrong place. So, so be careful when you're kind of copying and pasting here. So these get a little bit out of order because of the alphabetization, but we're just going to go to lesson one right here. We'll just double click to get in there and we've got this code. So I'm going to double click that code and you'll see the code right here. And it says, you know, here's what I want it to do. So I'm just going to copy this code. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do copy. Now to copy the code, I'm going to go over here to this tab that said main.py. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste it in there. Now I can hit enter for good measure. Just have one extra line there. And then I'm going to go up here and save. Now, if you see that window, usually that means that it's saved to the robot because it's sending across that USB-C. So I'm going to just double click on it, make sure it's selected. And then I'm going to hit the little play button right here. And you see, I get this first message. So if we look through the code, here's this first little message up here that says print, uh, hello master. And that's what it did. Then you get to here and it says if button, to, you know, button value equals one, then pass else and then it says if button value equals one print this out so basically when I press the one button I believe it should be showing me uh, that that code now I'm pressing the one but nothing is happening so I'm pretty sure this remote is dead but you can make this work so I'll just show you I'm just gonna change this to not equals to one and then I'm going to stop so you need to stop the execution make that change that you want save it you can't save it while it's running, so it'll give you a little error if you try. Press play. If you make a typo, don't worry, just hit stop. It'll give you an error, just like I did. I'm going to go back and actually change this to an exclamation point, like it should be. And that'll say not equals one. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to hit play again. Now you can see it's printing out these messages and it's printing them over and over and over because it's never hitting this value that says pass. It's constantly coming to the else. So I can see that this is working. It's actually working on the little robot. So the robot's the one that's putting out this message over and over and over. So I can scroll and scroll and scroll. It's just doing it over and over and over. So I'm going to hit stop. So you can see that this little, this little area, this IDE works, which is pretty cool. Um, when you get done with that, just double click, you know, stop it. Double click on main.py, make sure you're still there. You can just erase that value and then go back in your in your tutorial here. Lesson two is way down here at the bottom, but we'll double click it. Again, just select all. We'll copy it. Make sure you select main.py. We'll paste it. And then we're gonna save that code. And then we'll push that over to the robot. So now it starts running. And if we look back up here, it says, hey, this thing can change colors. Now you're not gonna be able to see that because I'm not recording the camera, but what it makes it do is it makes the robot actually start changing colors. So again, since my button's not working, I can modify the code here just a little bit to, to kind of get it running. And then maybe I can get my camera to record. I don't know, but we'll see. So I'm gonna hit stop. Just going to go here. I'm going to make sure I'm on the main.py. Just going to take out these two parentheses, which basically breaks this, which makes it go to this part of the loop. So it's going to just start running through this thing. Um, I'm just going to save that and you'll see it pop up and then we're going to hit play. And there we go. So on the screen where you can see the actual robot, you can see the lights going around in a circle, just lighting up like crazy. So again, we've got the program working. It should be based on a button press. If I had the remote uh, battery working, it would be. But there you go. You can work around these things with little bitty hacks like that. But I'm just going to click on stop and it stops and we're set. So this is some really cool stuff. And again, it starts off with beginner level programming techniques. But if you go back in the programming guide here, you can see that little by little it gets better and better. So you get to the point where you've got this infrared remote control. You've got... Uh, the infrared remote control car. So, so all these really cool things. And eventually you can just stack all of these things together in the code editor and push them over and really have this robot doing a lot of really cool stuff.
So yeah, this is the Crobot Bolt from Elecro. Again, very, very cool that you can make this thing just really kind of do all kinds of very fun stuff and really kind of put it together, have a good time with your kids, teach your kids a little bit about programming, but also make sure your kids understand what open source means and why it's so great that they can do something like this, that they're not locked into what somebody else wants them to do with their robotics. And the best part is, after my girls did this, um, a birthday's coming up, and, and one of them said, you know what, I'd love to get a, a robotic dog and uh, one that does a little bit more stuff. So that's the next project, and we're excited about it, and uh, I'm excited that they're interested. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. It's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back, and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your Open Source Advocate, but I want you guys to be the Open Source Advocates with me. So if you want to, get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing. Oh, my God.